In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an Excel spreadsheet to create a five point ROC curve and the resulting graph. This creates uh, an easy sheet that you can use over and over again. Just by putting in new frequencies, it'll immediately create your new graph. So this is some example data I just grabbed from two different studies to create ROC curves that were different on the graph here. So it's, this is basically fictitious data. And what you can see down here is the ROC graph and you could it's created and you could easily copy and paste this into some other document like a Word document uh, and you have your graph. You can easily edit the legend by creating a new title for whatever your two conditions are. And if you want to add other conditions you can just add other data series and I'll show you how to do that uh, as we create this graph. I'll recreate this this graph but first let me show you how the data are set up in this spreadsheet. So a couple of things. First thing is I have labels in here for me to remind myself. Uh, I use this nomenclature all the time so it's pretty good it's pretty well ingrained but but it's good to have verbal labels so that you're sure. So in this, we have abbreviation V is for very, S is for sure, and N is new, O is old. So what we have here is we're going to organize your responses based on frequencies. So the first thing is, let's suppose that I have two experimental conditions. We'll focus on just condition one for right now. Uh, you're going to have some new items. So these are new items, say like on a recognition memory test new items and these are the new frequencies. So we had a total as you can see of 2473 new items. This number may be odd because we might drop some trials uh, like for example when they report that they're guessing completely we might want to remove those and so you might have this odd number here. Uh, not a nice round number. These, This row represents the frequencies, I'll highlight it for you, this row represents the frequencies of new items based on their response. So this first column is new items that were called very sure that they were old. So they made an old judgment and then they rated it high confidence, very sure old. M is moderately sure, old. LSO is less sure that it's old. Then you have less sure that it's new, moderately sure that it's new, and very sure that it's new. And you're going to organize your data in this way to create the ROC curves. This is the way you want to do it uh, from old all the way out here on the right to new for the responses. Okay. So then the frequencies you would just put in. And if you have a new experiment, you're going to put in just this, this frequency. So really you would only enter in certain rows of data. Here we have old frequencies uh, and then we have new and old frequencies for the other condition. Um, so actually let me continue with that. So then you have old items on this recognition test. We do the same thing. So we have old items that were very sure they were called old. That's the count right there, the frequency count. Then we have old items moderately sure that they were old. Old items less sure that they were old. Old items less sure but they were called new, so this would be a miss. Moderately sure that they were new, and very sure that they were new. So those are the two rows with our frequencies. We do the same thing down here. That's the only information that you input. The rest of the stuff gets calculated, okay? So let me point out that these are cumulative frequencies across all subjects too, right? So. Uh, this is everyone's data collapsed together. So this is group group data. So the calculations. So what we're calculating are we're calculating the probability of a cumulative false alarm uh, relative to the probability of a cumulative hit. So we start off with a simple calculation over here. So you have G4, which is this frequency divided by the total, which is that total there, okay? So uh, so here in the calculations, you can see we just sum up across this row to get our total. So that number will be automatically calculated when you input a new frequency. Um, and so it's 292 divided by 2473. That's our uh, value right there. Now it's cumulative frequency. So the next cell over is actually G4 and F4. So it's G4 and F4 
added together, or 455, here I can do the calculations real quick, 455 uh, plus 292, uh, that's 747 divided by 2473, and you're gonna get 0.302, right? Uh, and this continues. So the next cell adds 242. The next cell adds 330. The next cell adds 584 for the fifth data point. Now we don't have the sixth data point because it's cumulative, so it would be one. Now we are gonna put those in for graphing purposes, but, uh, but that's the idea. You get a five point ROC curve because uh, you lose the sixth one because it's, you know, the cumulative uh, probability is sums to one, okay? So we do the same thing for the old frequencies. The calculations are the same. Of course, it's a different row. So you have your total here is at uh, H8, right? And so it's G8 divided by H8, right? And H8, of course, was the sum across this row. Uh, the next one over is F8 and G8 or 585 and 959 in this case and so on, right? So I'll show you the formulas for all of those if you really wanna pause it and take a look. Great, okay? So that's how we get our two data points. Now, these two data points get plotted together in the ROC curve, right? They make up one curve, each with two data points. So what I did over here is to made it, made it a little bit cleaner. We start off with a cumulative hits, right? And then we're gonna have 0.77 and 0.909, which are the uh, data points there. Then you have 0 0.533, 0 0.791. They're here, 40714, 302619, 118, and 384, right? So this is actually what's gonna get plotted in our curve. But I have in the formulas up here, like that it's gonna pull directly from D5. So it's gonna pull right there. Right, so you can create that uh, in your spreadsheet if you want. So again, if you just put in the frequencies, it then cascades to all of these other uh, cells. So we do the same thing down here. So basically we're gonna form our frequencies. Now I have a different total in here, so it's a different number of cases, RSC curves don't, you know, when you construct them, it doesn't really matter. Um, I pulled from a different study, that's why they're different, uh, just to create a different curve. Uh, but you can see here it's going to be 157 divided by 1534, right? And then you have the same thing. You're going to have 317 plus 157 to get our cumulative frequency. So we keep going like this to show you the formulas. We do the same thing for the old item. So it's 301, 1540, right? And then we have uh, 449 and 301 divided by 1540, etc. to get all of our data points, and then these data points end up over here. So it's kind of hard to see, but you have, well, 885, 935, so 885, 935, 584, 749, 0.45, 651, 309, 487, and 102, 195, right? So that is our uh, points now. Now notice I have new and old labeled here. So condition one new, condition one old. These are the frequencies that are the uh, proportions, I should say, that we uh, calculate. I uh, also have a row down here. If you do Z transformations, you can put the Z transformations in there to do the Z ROCs, but I'm not doing that today. Okay, so now it's pretty trivial. Once you have those calculations and now it's pretty trivial to create our graph. What we're gonna do, let me create a little bit of space here, is uh, we're gonna highlight our data and we're gonna to go to insert, and what we're gonna insert is we're gonna insert a scatter that has lines. And so you click that type and remove this down. I'll cover up the old graph here, and we can start to um, plot our ROC curve. So that's the first one. Now to add a new series, um, we're just gonna to go to select data and we're gonna add a new series. So this uh, new series is our second condition, so we'll type condition two, just so we can keep track of it. And this is our X value, right? Oh, I know you can't see that, so that's our X value. And then we go down here for the Y values, and we're gonna select the Y values, and it creates our second um, curve. Let me click out of that. So there's our second curve. You can change your line colors, you can change your markers. So if we want a, a bigger um, marker, we can uh, 
fill the marker with, let's see, we'll fill it with uh, white um, marker options. We can, here's our type. We can select a different type. Oops. So we can do like, uh, this is how I got the triangle. We can change the size as much as we want. Um, border, we do solid line and black, right? So you can go through and you can change all of the features to eventually create this uh, nice figure there. So that becomes pretty trivially easy. Now, the nice thing about this, let me just sort of show you, the nice thing about this is like once you have this created, right, you can create all that stuff, you can put in your frequencies or let's say you make a mistake and you you um, had the wrong one. You just put it in there and the, the graph will automatically adjust, you copy, you paste in. So if you have other research studies, uh, you can just start with the spreadsheet input your new frequencies and because the calculations are all there input your new frequencies in each of the rows and that's all you need to do it'll create your uh, RSC curve and you've already done it once you don't have to click through Excel every time you have a research study that you want to do an RSC graph so I hope you find that helpful uh, thanks for watching